Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm excited to introduce to you my series of literacy videos, English Reading and Spelling Rules. This program is designed to teach reading and spelling concurrently, enabling you to develop the critical skills necessary to become proficient readers and spellers. Join us on this journey to improve literacy skills and boost confidence in reading and spelling. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss a lesson. Let's get started. We learned that when we want to show that something belongs to someone or something, we add apostrophe S. So tell me what I need to do with the following phrases to show ownership or possession. To show that these pants belong to Tad, what do I need to do? Correct. Add apostrophe S. To show that the hat belongs to Hal, what do I need to do? Yes, apostrophe S. To show that the hand belongs to Dad, what do I need to do? A add apostrophe S. To show that the hint belongs to Al, what do I need to do? Add apostrophe S. What do we add to show possession or ownership of something? Correct. We add apostrophe S. This indicates that whatever this is belongs to this person or to this something. H, hat, huh. F, fire, f. D, Dog, d. S, salad, s. S, rose, z. L, lemon, l. P, pig, p. N, nine, n. I, itch, i. I, I, I. Look at my mouth. Repeat the sound that I make. Name the letter that makes that sound and write the letter. Here we go. Number one. S. S. Final position. S. S. Number two. T. T. Three. N, N, four, I, five, D, D, six, L, L, seven, P, P. Eight. A. A. Nine. Z. S voiced. Ten. F. F. Eleven. H. What do we add to show possession or ownership of something? Right, an apostrophe S. I want you to look at some phrases that I have written here on this side right here. Watch as I read these phrases. Anne's pen. Sid's flan. How many Anne's are there in this first phrase? One. How do we show that one singular Anne possesses or owns the pen? Right, with an apostrophe S. 
Let's look at the next phrase, SIDS flan. How many SIDS are there in this next phrase? One. How did we show that one singular SID possesses or owns the flan? Right, with an apostrophe S. Now, I want you to look at this side right here. Let me read these phrases to you. It says pans, lids, ants, heel. Let's look at the first phrase. How many pans are there in that phrase? Right, more than one. How do you know there's more than one pan? Right, because of that suffix s. Suffix s on a noun means more than one. How did we show that the plural, more than one, pans, possess or own the lids? What do we put there? Right, just an apostrophe by itself. Let's look at the next phrase, ants heel. How many ants are there? Right, it's more than one. How do you know there's more than one ant? Right, because of that suffix s at the end of a noun means more than one. And how do we show that that heel belonged to the ants? Right, with just an apostrophe. So that is something new. That's a new learning for us today. When we want to show that something belongs to a plural, meaning more than one, someone or something, we just add the apostrophe, such as ants hill. Today, we are going to be reading and spelling words that means something belongs to a plural something. Example, we know we add apostrophe, just the apostrophe, when we want to show ownerships of something that's more than one. So we have an S right here. We know constant suffix S means more than one. We want to show that this belongs to the more than one, someone or something. We just add the apostrophe. So let's look at that today. Now, if you want to get this PDF, you can download it. Where to find it is in the description below this video. So let's concentrate on number one here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see it. All right. We are going to circle our constant suffix s we always look for our suffixes kind of covered up that apostrophe is still there um we need to figure out what that sound of s is going to be so we always look at the letter before make the sound of that letter while touching your throat d d can you feel it vibrating yes so let's make that voice line for the s so that s is going to make what sound z let's look for our vowel a vowel in close syllable short, code it with a brief. Let's go to our second word in that phrase. Look at that. We got another constant suffix S, meaning more than one. Now, the sound of that constant suffix S is dependent on that letter before. What's the sound of T? T. Are you touching your throat? Is it vibrating? No. So that means that S is going to make what sound? S. Let's find our vowel. There's our vowel right there. It's in a closed syllable, a vowel in closed syllable short. Code it with a brief. What sound is that? That's right. It's I. Let's read those, that phrase right there. Right. Lad's fist. Those fist belongs to the lads. Let's go to our next one here. Let's find our... Constant suffix is S right there, meaning more than one. It, where it's dependent on that letter before it. What's the sound of D? D. Is it vibrating? Yes, so that means that S is going to vibrate. Let's put our voiced line on that to remind it's going to make the Z sound. Where's our vowel? Right, it's the A. Vowel in close syllable short, code it with a brief. It's going to make what sound? That's right, A. Uh, let's move to that second word. Let's 
circle our suffixes. S has two sounds. Look at that S and look at that letter before it. That's a T. Touch your throat and make that T, T sound. Is it vibrating? No, it's not. So that S is going to make what sound? Right. It's going to make a sound. Let's find our vowel here. Which letter? Right. A vowel in close syllable short. Code it with a brief. That's a short A sound, which is what? Correct. I. Let's read both of those words. Dad's pants. The plant, excuse me, the pants belong to those dads more than one. Let's go down to that third phrase here. Finding our suffixes. Circle your suffixes. Constant suffix S means more than one. Look at the L in front of it. Say that sound and touch your throat. L is it vibrating? Great, it is. That means that S is going to vibrate. Let's make that voice line. And what's the sound of voiced S? Zzz. Good. Go to the vowel in this word. It's what? A. A vowel and close a little short. Code it with a brief. What sound of short A? A. Let's go to that second word here. Finding suffix S. Circle it. Looking at that base word, that is a D. Touch your throat, make the D sound. D. It's vibrating, so that S is going to vibrate. Let's make that voice line on that S. What sound is that S going to make? Zzz. Very good. Let's find that vowel. A, a vowel in close syllable short. Code it with a brief. What's the sound of short A? Ah. Read those that phrase. Pals, hands. The hands... Belong to the pals. Pals means friends. And our last word, we're going to, last phrase that we're going to read today. Okay. We have suffix S, meaning more than one. What's the sound of the letter in front of it? T. Is it vibrating? No. So what's the sound of S? S. Very good. Finding the vowel. A. A vowel in close syllable short. Code it with a brief. What's the sound of short A? I. Let's go to our second word here. Now, there is no suffix here. Nope. So we don't need to find the suffix. And don't let that S fool you because we always know initial S says S. So let's just look for the vowel. A. A vowel in close syllable short. Code it with a brief. It's going to make what sound? I. Let's read that phrase. Plants stand. The stand belongs to the plants. All right, today we're going to practice spelling. We're going to be spelling four phrases today. The first phrase is ants sand. Repeat that. Okay. Now the first word is ants. What's the A? N. Ants, the S, and then our next word is sand, S, A, N, D. The sand belongs to the ants. So what do we need to add so that we understand ants more than one? That they have that sand. That sand belongs to them. Right. We just add the apostrophe. Nice job. Let's go to the next phrase. Lads hats. Repeat that. Okay. Let's start with lads. L. L. A. A. D. D. Lads. What's that? That's our voice S. Lads. Next word is hats. Huh? H. A. A. T. T. S. S. 
We want to show that the hats belong to the lads. Lads are boys. What do we need to add? Right. An apostrophe. That's all you need to add. We add apostrophe to plural things to show that something belongs to them. All right, let's go to number three. Phrase three. Pals, hints. Pals, hints. How do you spell pals? P. P. A. A. L. L. Pals. Pals. S. There's our voice S. Pals. The S is vibrating because the L is vibrating. Let's do hints. Huh. H. I. I. N. N. T. T. S. S. Pals hints. The hints belong to the pals, the friends. So how do we show that something belongs to someone or something that's plural, more than one? Right, we just add the apostrophe. All right, our last phrase, number four. Dad's land. How do you spell a D? D. I. A, D, D, Dads. That's our voiced S. Land. L, L, A, A, N, N, D, D. Dad's land. How do we show that the land belonged to those dads? Right, we just add the apostrophe because it's plural. Thank you for joining us for this lesson on English reading and spelling rules. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot. Don't forget to practice what we covered today to strengthen your reading and writing skills. Remember, each lesson brings us closer to the goal of our becoming proficient readers and writers. So stay motivated and keep practicing. Don't miss our next lesson where we'll continue exploring more important rules and concepts. If you like this video, give it a like and share it with your friends and family. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell to stay updated with all our new lessons. See you in the next lesson. Keep learning and improving every day.